Also new in Pro Tools 2024.6 is direct support for SynchroArt's Repitch plugin. And this supports both the Elements version and the standard version, the light version and the full version. And it's great for tuning vocals either really quickly with a macro-based workflow or to go in and individually tweak specific notes. Now, here's a short phrase that I'm going to work with. He's not good for you, babe. Oh, I'm a much better choice. Oh, I will show you the world, boy. Oh, just listen to my voice. So it sounds pretty good, but there are a couple of notes that are a bit out. So as with the spectral editing, we can get to it either in a clip-based or track-based format. So from track-based, we can go under here and under repitch, I can engage the edit function. And I can also go into the elastic audio and R menu and choose it from here. And what's great about this is that it's direct transfer. You don't need to play or transfer anything in real time. As you can see, it's already in here and we get the docked editor. And again, like we saw before, we can undock and resize freely or click there to dock it. And we also have the option of engaging it on a clip by clip basis by right clicking directly on the clip and engaging it there or by using the clip menu and getting to it from there. So nothing we haven't seen before. So this is a really useful and easy to use, great sounding pitch correction plugin. We can use command and option to freely zoom in any direction directly in the editor here. And we see a pitch trace over all the notes that are detected. And we see a pitch grid over here. And there's a scale displayed here. Right now it's set to chromatic by default, but it'll color the notes in the selected scale so we can easily identify them. Now, this can work with a macro-based workflow. We can set a variety of presets over here. And for example, I'm using high-pitched snap to selected scale for what I want to do. I'm just going to click no. I'll get back to that in a moment. And we can choose a macro to work with from there, or we can set a default macro. Like for example, maybe I'm going to be doing a bunch of tuning all using female vocals in a high pitched range. So I can click this and select that same choice of macros that I can tweak some of the underlying parameters and even save my own customized user settings. So the idea is that when we select this, it's going to overwrite any changes we made. That's why I got that message and tune the vocals based on what I'm choosing. Now, the first thing I want to do is select the scale. We can do that from here. And I'm going to go to the scales menu here. And I know that this is in E flat. So I'm going to put this to say D sharp major. I'm going to add this and I'm going to save this as my scale. And we can see that. And now we see the notes of the scale here, a refined version of the notes on the pitch grid here. And you can see them colored based on what conforms to the notes in that scale. So now what I want to do is choose this high pitched vocal snap notes to selected scale. And it's asking me if I want to overwrite any manual changes I may have done. And I haven't done any yet, but I'm going to click yes. And it's calculating and it's tuning everything. And you can see here, it wasn't a badly performed vocal. And you can see the pitch trace here. I'll just zoom a little bit of the original tuning and now the corrected tuning. And again, some notes are more dramatic than others. And if we play it, it'll sound much more in tune without any dramatic changes. He's not good for you, babe. Oh. Now, for example, here, maybe I don't want so much vibrato. It kind of scoops up high here. We have these little hot spots if we want to make manual changes. And if I click the note at the top over here, I can use this to scale the vibrato and pitch drift. And I think I might like something like that a bit better. He's not good for Here, maybe this ooh, just listen. Maybe I think I want to do the same kind of thing there. So here it is. I'll select the note. And let's see if I do, in fact, like that better. Maybe I want to bring this down. I can transpose pitches. And if I hold down option, it'll conform to semitones. And if I move freely, I can get anywhere in between and double click. It'll snap to the nearest scale tone, and let's see if that works. So very creative and or corrective changes that you can use with this. Now, this is just a kind of quick jump start for this, but there's a lot of tools you can use here. We can 
center the notes using this. We click on that and we can choose to tune the individual notes to as close to perfect as possible. And we can even preserve drift if we want. And you can see the drift moving as we do that. So a lot of control here. We can draw, if we get little clicks and pops, we can do that and we can use the shaper tool to create different nodes. Let me just give you a real quick demo of this. I'll zoom in on this note and we can click there, for example, and change the actual shape within the vibrato or tuning of a note. We can split notes and we can change the timing and a lot more. So very complex or simple program, depending how much you want to get into it. And that's a quick jump start for repitch. And of course, when you want to render everything, as with the spectral editing, we can go under the clip and or track menu. And under here, let me just select the clip. We can, for example, here bypass. If I want to hear what this sounds like, quickly bypass. Maybe it's always possible the original might be better. And that word my was a bit out, and I'm sure it's going to be better now with this enabled. Yeah, that was the note that I changed. So we can do that, and then we can always render from under here again. Let me just select this. We can render from there or the right-click menu. And when we render like this, it's going to leave the plugin active. So if we want to revisit any or all the clips on the track, we can do that. And we can always go onto the track here and right-click there and choose none. And it gives us the ability to commit and remove the plugin from the track completely. Or we can go revert and remove it as well or cancel and just do nothing. So let's say I decide I don't want to do any repitch editing at all. I just want to remove this experiment that I don't like it. I can go revert and the plugin will be removed. But for now, I'm going to commit and it's going to commit and render the track and remove the plugin and it would sound fine now. He's not good for you, babe. Oh, much better choice. Oh, I will show you the world, boy. Oh, just listen to my voice. We'll continue with more in the next video.